Have you seen any vampires around here? Uh, um, yeah, right, right over there. I, I saw one right over there. Okay. Huh. Hey, wait. You're a vampire? Uh, how do you know? I, I don't. You, you just look like a prissy boy wearing too much makeup. Don't let that dude lied to me. I'm gonna go kill him. Uh, hey guys, welcome to another 31 Horror Toys and 31 Days Review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Marvel Legends Toy Biz Blade figure. Now this is Movie Blade. And he is really dang cool. There's a lot going on here. He has a lot of accessories. And basically, do you get a lot of bang for your buck, especially considering this motorcycle itself would make a new modern figure worth like $30. And yet this guy was the same price as all the other Legends at the time, so... Okay, let's take a look at the figure himself. We'll take a look at the accessories next. Okay, first we're going to take a look at sculpt and paint. Let me... And I guess we'll also take a look at the jacket since that's like right there. Uh, big complaint on the jacket is it just gets frayed really easy. See that? Let me get some focus in here. Yeah. It's very unfortunate because otherwise it's a very cool piece and it adds quite a bit. And it looks sort of leathery. It's it's a pretty good pleather, but it's just loses its integrity quite easy. I like the little stitching parts on it. it. Looks good. Got this little open part in the back. And then the collar. Overall nice. Okay, so let's take a look at the figure underneath that. Which, I don't know, with the jacket off, he kind of... I don't know. I'll tell you, show you guys in a second. Yeah, his arms just look a little odd. It's that Toy Biz look where the arms are a bit too separated from the body. Which some people may complain about, some people actually like it, and it's all up in the air. For me, I am a little bit bothered by it. It looks a little too far away. It just looks odd. But, that doesn't take away my, from my enjoyment of the figure too much. So let's take a look at the sculpt. The Wesley Snipes likeness, I think, is very good. Maybe a little a little off. It looks like his jaw is a little too small. Like I remember him having more of a chin, but other than that, it pretty much looks dead on. I like the way it's been painted too. It's got uh, several different colors thrown in there. It looks like a black wash over that. If you see, like there's some dirt looks on his face. There's a little uh, tiny mustache there. His eyes look to be put on very nicely, and then he's got his little pencil thin eyebrows. His hair is perfect. It even has the little tattoos going down his neck. I like that quite a bit. And then, I, in profile, he doesn't look quite as good as he does just dead on. That looks exactly like Wesley Snipes, you know, and that looks just like... Uh, it looks a little bit like him. It also looks a little cartoony. Yeah, that's all. Okay, and then, now let's take a look at the mid-torso here, which... I like how it has all these little straps on it, and all it looks pretty cool. But uh, I feel like it's got a bit of a separation from it. It just looks... Like, this part doesn't fit so well with this part. Like, they may it may be a little too wide. But other than that, it's sculpted very well. It's got little tiny cracks and details, making it look like it's leather or something. I like that. And then the paint applications of these little silver... I, I'm guessing... Are these uh, throwing stars of his? Shurikens or whatever? I'm not sure. Maybe they're just, like, buttons. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie in quite a while. I've seen Blade 2 recently, but that's only because Norman Reedus is in it. And then this right here is where his sword goes in. Unfortunately, I do not have his original sword. That's the only accessory that I do not have of his, so I just used this sword, which came with, I'm thinking, a Guardians of the Galaxy character. I can't Gamora, yeah. So that just sticks in there, basically. And that fits through the jacket, which has this little slit there. So it goes like that, just like in the movie. I like that. Okay, and then at the legs, it's very well sculpted. I like all the wrinkles put in there. There's not too much of a paint job on the body, to be honest. There's it could it could use a bit of a wash here or there, give it a little more detail. It does look a tad bit plain, maybe just a little light white brushing. I like the stakes over here. And then uh that's basically just the nice wrinklage going throughout. 
And he's got a little belt there that's unpainted, that's unfortunate. And then I don't like that their joints are brown at the hip here, because that makes this look like he has a hole in his pants or something. It just doesn't look quite right. It's a slight mistake there on their part. So, so far he's got a few technical errors, but I don't think it's anything that hurts him too bad. Let's go over the accessories now, which we've already seen the jacket. Uh, let's put the jacket on him again, since I do prefer that look. Another thing I'm going to complain about is his gloved hands. It almost looks like it's not supposed to be gloved hands. Maybe they're planning for it to be, like, regular hands, and then they just were like, oh wait, it should look gloves. It should have gloves, so they just painted it black. See? There's, like, no difference between this part here and the arm part, so it just sort of melds together. Bit of a complaint there. Okay, let's put this back on. Which is, it's fairly easy to get on as long as you keep his fist, at, well, as long as you keep his hand in a fist. Slips right through. Arg. There we are. And then you gotta resituate all that. So basically, just what you would do with a, any action figure's clothing. Okay, let's slip this in the back so you can see how that works. Beautiful. Okay, and now another accessory he comes with is his sunglasses, which they made very tiny and they don't have like it pegs in it or anything, so it's supposed to just like sit on there. What I did was I added a little bit of sticky tack. That helps it stay on a little bit better. And he does look really cool with sunglasses on, so although I don't feel like it looks all that right, like maybe it's tilted a little too much. I don't know. But it does look cool. Okay, and then his other accessory is his big weapon here, which is sculpted fairly well. Yeah, it's just got some nice little details put in there. I don't like that this part's not painted. Like, everything else on here gets sort of a dry brush of silver, and then this one's just kind of sticks out. And that actually can be pushed in, so whichever you want to display it as. I guess that means that he's running out of ammo if you're doing that. I'm not sure. Maybe that's how he loads it. I, again, I haven't seen it in a while. Big complaint on it, though, is its handle is way too big for Blade's hand, and then you end up with this sort of can't-really-hold-it pose where he's just kind of... Let's see, if you jam it in there and just have it tilted at the right angle, he can look like he's holding it, but he can't technically hold it. It's just... It's very unfortunate. I, I'm a bit bummed by that. Because it does look cool, and it would be cool if it fit with him. And I do believe this actually was, came out with the uh, older figure of the Blade figure, and it wasn't even a Marvel Legends figure. So, that's kind of cheap. Okay, and then the final accessory we've got here, well, I guess, second to last accessory, is his, uh, I guess it's like, retractable in a way blade. It's his throwing blade that is really cool. It does, it kind of... Uh, pegs together. As you can see here, if you wanted to, you could break them apart, then hook them together, and then it just moves like this, Ugh. and then like this. No real paint detail except for the black here, everything else is just plain. And then he can hold that in either hand if you want. Of course, he has the hinged fingers, so good luck figuring out if you can get it tight enough. Because hinged fingers just tend not to work too well. On this hand, however, it's a bit tighter. Let's see. Yeah, this hand can hold it fairly well. So that's pretty cool. And then his final accessory here, which is the big, big accessory, is his motorcycle. Which actually is a little small compared to him, but he does fit on it very nicely. So props for that. I like the tires here. They're made out of rubber, and they're separate from the entire piece there, not just sculpted on Except for this one, actually, you know what? No, this one's separate, too. Okay, so two pieces of rubber for the tires. It's got little details like the lights there, I believe. That's painted, but it looks like almost like they've got that clear glass there. Little rusted type uh, copper-colored uh, pieces in there. I'm not exactly sure if this is movie accurate, but it does look cool, so why not? It's got all these little bolts all over. Very boxy looking. Then there's the handlebars. And now let's see how he fits on it. As you can see, there's these tiny little pegs back here. His feet are supposed to pop into those as such. There we are. And then you do that on both sides. Then also I'll point out that 
you could hang it on the wall if you want, like this. Although I'm not exactly sure why Blade would be driving up a wall. It just doesn't seem right. It would, if it was a Ghost Rider figure, sure. Because, I mean, in the freaking Ghost Rider movie, he did that. He drove up a freaking building. But uh, Blade, not so much. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so he can fit on it. It does look a slight bit tiny, but he does fit rather well. The articulation really allows for it. And I do like it. It's a nice accessory to have. It's better than a Build-A-Figure piece, to be honest. If, they all, if all the figures came with little vehicles and stuff instead of Build-A-Figure parts, that would be awesome. Okay, let's set him... Well, his motorcycle aside, and let's take a look at his articulation. So, the articulation, of course, is going to be inhibited with the jacket on, so let's do a quick look at the arms with the, ar with the jacket on. His arm can't move full 360 at the shoulder. It can move this far up, and then basically everything else is fine. It's basically just the shoulder that's inhibited there, you know? Okay, so let's pop this off, and let's see his full articulation with this off. Okay, at the shoulders, you can do a full 360. You can move upward to, wow, just like straight up. And then, uh, there's a swivel right at that shoulder. A bit next to the bicep, full 360. Double jointed elbow. And then a spin at the wrist. And then that's more like the forearm. But then there's no spin up here. Instead, it's a hinge that goes in and out. So it's a scratch at the wall pose. Then he has those hinged fingers, which honestly not a huge fan of which can't even go into quite a fist, it's more like just a holding something pose. And then the other hand does about the same, the other arm does everything the same. Now, going to the head, he can do a turn that far to that side, it's very tight. And then a turn to that side, he can look up that much, and then bit down that much. Yeah, it's a, just a ball joint inside here. Which is something that Marvel, Legend did, Marvel Legends did with some of their movie figures and stuff like that where they didn't actually articulate the upper neck, just the bottom part. Okay, now at the torso here, he has one split right here where he can do a full 360 spin. He can crunch forward a bit and crunch backward and a bit side to side if you want. Then there's another split right here where he can do a full 360. Then there's a hinge at the leg that can kick forward and back and then it can kick off to the side. So that's nice there. And then there's a full 360 spin at that same spot. Same on the other side. And then double jointed knees. Very nice. And then there's a boot cut right there. Full 360. And then at the ankles, he can move back and forth a little bit. About the same. No, this one gets a little bit more. And then he has um, no, no articulation in the ankle pivot. So that's unfortunate. No ankle pivot. So basically, yeah, he can't get into too much of a split while keeping his feet flat on the floor. And then he has toe articulation, which is not very common anymore. So that's the blade figure. Make sure to stick around for some size comparisons. Tell me what you guys think. Honestly, I do like this figure, but I would not recommend spending too much on him because he does have technical errors. If you wanted him because he looks cool in his jacket, keep in mind you can't really play around with the jacket or anything because it will just fall apart. Like, this thing, it hasn't really even been used all that much. It just, it couldn't take the heat, I guess, and it's falling apart. So, yeah, it's kind of disappointing. The accessories aren't all that great. But overall, a pretty cool figure. So, tell me what you guys think. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I will see you, I'll see you guys in the next review. Make sure to check out Ultra Maximus' uh, YouTube account. I put it right here for you. And make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace. Here's Blade next to the movie Cyclops figure and the movie uh, Wolverine figure. And here he is next to the Morbius figure.